Welcome to Bhuvanur RBIR Laya Academy of Music and Mathematics. Welcome to Povenur RBIR Laya Academy of Music and Mathematics. This is a special edition of the finger positions for learning the art of Mridangam. I am going to demonstrate the exact finger positions of how to play on the left side and also on the right side. The basic vowels as you know, the basic uh, syllables of Mridangam uh, learning are Tha, Dhi, Dhum, Nam. So let's look at each one of it in a close range. Tha has to be played with the left finger, the left hand and with four fingers together That is Tha. Dhi is with four fingers on the right side. Within the black surface you have to play and that is Dhi. Then Dhum is on the left side which is between the two shells like there is an outer frame and an inner frame. In between that the resonance will generate and that is the sound of Dhum. To differentiate with what is Tha and what is Dhum, I will play both Tha and Dhum and so that you know the sound difference. That's how it is. The Nam is the most difficult and very very technical to learn this art and once when you get this Nam, I think more, uh, you will get to know and learn Mridangam properly. The how to play num is have your position like dhi. Take, lift all your fingers, only retain your ring finger onto the black surface. Slowly push it back towards the peripheral of the outer circle and the inner circle, the black frame and the inner frame. And then you have to use only the index finger to knock on the frame. If you want a sharp, if a sharp note, you have to play the numb has to the finger has to be stuck to the surface, and if you want the vibration, you can take the finger off. You're cutting the note, you're cutting the sound of numb accordingly as you play the phrase, you get you can use as per your uh, uh, imagination and the structuring of the phrases, it can be a sharp note or it can be an open note. These are the basic four vowels. The next one is the dhi is broken into two, which is skitha. This is dhi and then when you break that into two, three fingers together and one finger together becomes skitha. So now you have learned six positions in the art of playing Mridangam. I am going to introduce now subtle Nada Surkhat, Nadam uh, syllable. Like as you played Nam, there is a layer 
which is a white layer in between the yellow layer and the black layer. So same position as numb, anchor the ring finger and play between that. This is then, then. That is then. The next one is using your little finger. It's also called pinky. You can use it like as you play, play the dhi, you just take all the fingers, only retain the little finger, push it towards the peripheral between the yellow and the black surface. You might have to play using your little finger. This is going to be a little tough for you because you may not have the required strength to blow because the little finger may not have the strength. So it will be painful initially, but as you practice, you get this sound nicely. This is called chapu. This is very, very predominantly used in the art of playing Mridangam. This dim, nam, chapu, these are all nadam surkat. The same chop, it's called ara chop because you're playing in the half of this half of this uh, circle. Around that, if you play this chop towards the end of the frame, that's called ara chop. That is ara chop. When you play the sol like a phrase like thalong, you can play using chop, full chop, and ara chop. That is ara chop. So you learned eight syllables now: tha, dhi, dhum, nam. Ki, tha. Dhin, chop, ara chop. Now another stroke is dhim. A dhim is like when you play phrases like tadhing in a thom, 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 tadhum, tadhik in a thom. These are all the phrases for five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. In there. You just have to play the dhi and pull towards you and get the sound of dhi. Towards you. So this is the ninth syllable you have learned. Now there are combined syllables. Tha plus dhi is dith. Play together at the same time. Dith. Dhimi. When you play dhimi, ta ki, you play along with dum, dum, and ta together, it becomes dhimi. So you learn dith. Dhimi. Then you can also play tham, dhim. Tham is a combined stroke of dum and na. That is Tom. Dhim is Dom plus Din. Dit is also Tha and Dhim. You can also play like this. You can also play with Tha and Din together. So these are all the combined strokes. You can also play Chap and with your left side. To get the uh, uh, em to emphasize on the stroke, as you play a phrase, as you get to advanced lessons, these emphasizing attitude will come to you, or by by yourself, by by your own means. So that that way, you now you have to use these combined strokes. All these things will come to you which is been dealt with in the classes. So these are all the combined strokes like Dith, Thom, Dhim, Dith. You can use with Tha and Chap, Tha and Ara Chap, Dhum Chap, 
home and another chopper. There is also a um, way you can use the, a, a delayed way of playing. You have to play dom and then chop next, but it's like a So these are all aesthetics way, aesthetics of you know, uh, playing a particular phrase. So these are all the basic elements I would say as part of fingering technique. The most important thing I will now come to you is what's called a gumki. Gumki is nothing but a reverberated dhum. A reverberated dhum is moving your hand in a particular way. You have to move your hand backward and forward. The way you're getting the sound is because there is a layer of skin inside and outside. As you press the finger, the air escapes and you get a uh, a resonant dome and that is called gumiki. So that is gumiki which is on the left side you need to practice a lot and then typically how you play is people apply glue, people apply the paste, people also put rava, that's the original one, the rava paste, which gives a perfect resonance sound. Then one more thing I want to teach you here is, when you play all the key, now taka, dimmi, dimmi, taka. Initially you play with that, and later all these key, you can convert to with only using this finger. Instead of playing, that is delayed because when you play slow, you will be able to use it with like with this full full rotation. But if you want to play fast. when you want to accompany in songs there are few things which you cannot do it that way all these you can play as you get to know operate with this finger so as you play taka dimi dimi taka when you have to play in the fast way these are all the things which you use as an advanced concepts when you accompany a song. As you get to know these lessons, once first is to understand and play the right position in the Mridangam. That's important. So you have to practice all the Balapadams using these positions, all these 108 uh, um, lessons. You should know how to play with these right positions and give emphasis and it should be rounded. Kitta and all, it cannot be very loose. It cannot be like this. Should the emphasis should be there with force and a perfection if it's rounded and when you learn this perfectly then your learning becomes easier as you move forward your all the things that will be easy takeaways so all the bala bottoms should be practiced with the right finger positions and stress and also the next part is i'm going to teach you how to put thala what are the important angas of thala what are the thalas we have seen in level 2 and level 3 and we will demonstrate how to put these thala and once when you know to do these basics correctly then you have to go back to, or to my level 1, level 2 and level 3 
and see and learn my lessons and tell and recite in your hand using this thala. That is going to perfect your art in an immense way. So let's now look at how to put these thalas. What are all the angles of thalas in a much detailed manner? Mm -hmm.